All right, we're going to be looking at how do you do an array in VHDL. So VHDL, we're going to look at a 1D array. And this 1D array, well, the term we are using is array. I want you to think of this as being a memory. It's either going to be a read-only memory, or later we can modify it to be you know, read and write memory. But the basic idea is this is going to be an internal signal. So you're going to do it between you know your architecture and your begin statement the first thing we got to do is make a new data type so here i'm calling this data type vhdl array you don't have to use that name you can use any name you want and we're going to say this is an array and then you're going to put in the number of elements that you want <clears throat> so the first element would be zero index one two and in this case we're going up to 1199 which will give us 1,200 uh, elements. Then you're going to say of, and then what comes after it is the size of the number of bits you want. So I'm going to need it more than one bit. So here I'm using three bits. So inside the array, you say how big of an array you want, and then of will be how many bits do you want each element to represent. Now this has only created the data type that we needed. So now we actually need to make the array. And to do that, we're going to use the signal. And with the signal, now here I've given it the name title map because we're going to be using it into the sprite game. I'm going to say the title map is of array VHDL array. Now this just makes <laughs> an array for you. There's no values into the array. So all we're going to be looking at is how to access an array, because that's all we need for this first part of the project. So let's look at how to initialize the array. It's best to kind of avoid using zeros and ones, you know, especially if what you're trying to use this array for has some type of meaning. For us, as we make a, a game, this is the sprites, the colors on the screen we want. So we're going to use, you know, names. So you're going to do a constant. Here I use the name red, and then it's three bits. And then this uh, colon equals tells you what you want the red to be. So I want it to be one zero zero. Sometimes I would say try to keep the names, the lengths the same. So red is R E D, blue I dropped the E, green I did as G R N. But sometimes it's just easier to uh, identify. So now that we have colors, I'm going to fill in the array. So now if you look at the statement, it's signal tile map VHDL. So it's the same thing I did up here. But now I'm going to do the colon equals. And then you start putting in what you want each element to be. So again, this is starting at element 0, 1, 2. And you must fill up the entire array. So all the way up to 1199. Now, in the VHDL, you don't necessarily need this to be one long text of 2,000 elements. You know, you can always put extra, uh, you know, new lines. And as long as everything ends in the, before this uh, parentheses semicolon, it'll be fine. So you can break it up different ways. Now, sometimes we want to have that our logic is something like a 2D array. But we're not able to make this 2D array. All we have is 1D array. So how do we make this 1D array act like a 2D array? All right, so let's say we have something called 2D array. And here I'm defining what the values of this 2D array are. So we can look at rows. So I have this item circled in red. That's a row. I have the orange. That's a column. So the first row is 0, 1, 2. Second row is 5, 6, 7. Third row is 3, 4, 9. All right, so let's say we want A to be the 2D array at row zero, column two. So we look at row zero. So if we put little indexes here, one, zero, one, two, zero, one, two. So I want row zero. So that's the one highlighted in red. And then I want column two, column two, that's the orange. And the item where they intersect is the two, so that's what it's equal to. Next example, I say 
I want the 2D array, 2D array one, zero, row one, column zero, that would give us five. And then the last one I want row two, column one, which will be the four. We see it's equal to four. So that's how I want the 2D array to work. So how do I get that in the 1D array? So when we do the 1D array, we're looking at everything on row zero, followed by row one, followed by row two. So for us, if I took all of those numbers and just putting them all down in 1D array, it goes zero, one, two, that's row zero. Five, six, seven, row one. Three, four, nine, row two. And then I can access this by saying it's the 1D array and then I'm gonna put in the row that you want, the length of the row, and then the column that you want. So here on the 2D array, I want a row zero, column two, but that's 1D array, zero, because that's the column, the three, because there's three elements in the array, plus two, but that's zero plus two, that's two, and each of these has an index like zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we want index two and then index two is the value two. Then let's do B. I want it row one, column zero. So one times three plus zero is three. And we look at the index for three. The index is in red. That's element five. I want it to be five. Uh, C is two, one. So two times three is six plus one is seven. We go up, index seven is the value four. So we read two, five, four. If we go back up to the array, we also wanted two, five, four. So you can see that this works. All right, so the next thing is, how do I read the array from VHDL? All right, so we have our initial declaration, type VHDL array is an array of zero, 11 to 1199. Each element is three bits. I would make the title map. Usually you would also initialize this. Next items you're gonna need are, you're gonna need a signal to read the array value. So that's the, the value stored inside the array. And this needs to be at the same size that matches the size of the element of an array. Then the next thing you're gonna need is a signal that is the index that you want. You're gonna want this as a number. Later, you're gonna convert it, but let's just do it as unsigned. And then I want a 10 down to zero. This is 11 bits, but two to the 11 is 2048. You gotta make sure the number of bits you give is larger than the number of elements. If I only had done nine down to zero, 10 bits, that would have been uh, 1024. Oh, and 1024 is less than 1199. So it wouldn't have enough bits for access. All right, so all of this would be between your architecture and your begin. And then in your code, you need to read it. So you'll say the read array value is gonna be assigned title map. Then you're gonna put parentheses and you gotta, the, the array needs an integer to access it. So we're gonna do two underscore integer. And then in parentheses, we put the index that we wanna access. Now here, at some point in your code, you need to figure out what the index is. So, you know, somewhere in your code, you'll have access index is assigned some value. Now, what you gotta remember is data types have to match so that you're probably gonna to need to do some converting. So let's say I had access index is assigned, unsigned in the parentheses A. And if A was like a standard logic vector, I needed that unsigned to make the, the data type match. If A was unsigned, then I wouldn't need to do any conversion. All right, so that should get you started on how to think about an array. And that should help you, you know, in your projects.